Unfortunately, we hear this. Brother, sister, this is the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The normal, the unfortunate, the normal reaction now is what? Now, are you serious? A debate starts. Directly a debate starts. Why? It's, it's like someone is correcting you. Someone is forcing you. And then people start coming up with arguments that we never heard before in our life. Ah, this, 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 why? Why is it important? Find me in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Find me an ayah in the Quran that says this. Well, subhanallah, sometimes we go, we, we speak to Muslims and we find this reaction. The brother said, find me an ayah in the Quran that says this. Find me a, a, the, with the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this all. We say, ah, oh, subhanallah, sadaqa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 1400 years ago approximately, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knew, he was told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that people of his ummah, certain people of Islam, unfortunately, years after, will come and will start making this claim making this call that what we want to take what's in the Quran and we leave the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Rasulullah sallallahu said in the hadith, uh, don't let me see, don't let me know of, don't let me hear of a person, a Muslim, that will be told this is the order of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or this is the prohibition of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or this is the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then this person will be on his couch, muttaki'an ala arikatihi. Yani, he is sitting on his air, on his sofa or his couch, and a person will come to him and say, this is sunnah. And then he will start saying, ha, between me and you is the book of Allah. Whatever we find in the book of Allah, we will apply. So Rasul says that, ala innama, innama harrama Rasulullah, kama harrama Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever Rasulullah sallam forbids, is exactly like what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbids. <laughs> The first requirement to taste the sweetness of Iman, to taste the sweetness of belief, Allah and His Messenger must be more beloved to you than everything else in this world. The second thing, when you hibba mar'a, la yuhibbuhu illa lillah, and to love a human being, to love a brother, to love whoever. Why do you love? You love for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You love for the sake of Allah and you hate for the sake of Allah. Number three, and to hate to return to sin, to hate to return to jahiliyyah, to hate to return to kufr. Like you hate to be thrown in hellfire. Like after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has saved him from this life, like he hates to be thrown into hellfire. Three conditions that have to exist for a person to taste the sweetness of this deen, the sweetness of this iman. Now, unfortunately, unfortunately, we look in the conditions of the ummah of Rasulullah nowadays and find that claiming is easy. Everyone, you ask any Muslim, do you love Muhammad Do you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do you love this deen? The answers are obvious and ready prepared, of course, with no doubt. Today, what we're speaking of, inshallah, is not just love on our tongues, it's what love means. What do you mean by love? Why should we love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? People don't know. Allahumma hadina fi man hadayna wa aafina fi man aafayna wa tawallana fi man tawallayna wa dhalik lana fi ma a'atayna wa qina wa shrif anna sharwa ma qadayna أستغفرك ونتوب إليك ونؤمن بك ونتوكل عليك. Look at the the story of the companion of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم that was traveling with his merchandise, traveling with his بضاعة with his تجارة with his business. He had products on him and on the way قطع طريق. A robber, a thief, a thief came and he stopped him. Grabbed his sword and said, I will take your money and I will kill you. 
So the man was amazed, the companion was amazed. He said, why do you want my blood? Take the money and go. He goes, no, I will take your money and I will kill you. So the companion has a connection with Allah. What did he say? He said, allow me to pray a couple of rakat before you kill me. So he started praying. This person, a human being like us, the difference between us and him is that he has a connection with Allah. So this man, he started praying. He prayed four rakat, but proper four rakat, connection with Allah. And then in his sujood, he started making dua. Ya wadud, ya wadud, ya dal arsh al majid, ya fa'al lima yurid. A beautiful dua. Inshallah, you learn Arabic, you memorize it. He started making this dua, and then said, Ya mughithu aghithni. Oh ya Allah, you are you my savior. Ya Allah, save me. Help me please, ya Allah, assist me. Giving salam, finished the four rakat, giving salam, he, he looked in front of him, he found a Faris. Found a Faris, a soldier. With a, with a harba, uh, what do you call it in English? The spear. He had the spear in front of his horse, between the horse's ears, and then he came to the thief, and the thief saw him, and this killed him. This was an angel, an angel, Malak. So, man, man, so companion amazed. Look at the words, look at the Iman, look at the, the connection with Allah. When he found him, he saved him. He didn't say, thank you, you saved me. He says, who are you? Who are you? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved me using you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved me, not you. Allah saved me and you are the means. Who are you? So the, this man said, I'm an angel. I'm an angel from the heavens. When you made your dua your first time, the doors of the heavens started shaking. Look at the connection. Look at the effect, the power of dua. When you made your dua the first time, the heavens started shaking. And then when you made the dua again the second time, the people of the heavens, the inhabitants of the heavens, all started talking about the matter. Everyone was talking, what's this, what's this dua? Who is asking? Who is calling? Who is, who is calling unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And then when you made the dua the third time, I asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow me to save you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted. Directly finished. An angel came directly for this man. Why? Because this man had this connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some people out there have this connection with Allah. Imagine a person as such, with such iman, with such yaqeen, yaqeen, having such a connection with Allah. The second he raises his hand, all problems solved. All of us. You want a wife? Simple. Raise your hands. Ask Allah. You want a job? People come, unemployment, Centrelink, every week, trying, left, right and center. Asking Allah, asking people, asking humans, please find me a job. Allah ta'ala, leaving his number, going this. And, and all this, all this, not bad. But where's the connection? Where's the dua? Where's the relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Every night, every single night, every single night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in the hadith, authentic hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends to the first sky and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls. هَلْ مِنْ دَاعٍ فَأَسْتَجِيبُ لَهُ The last third of the night. When the last third remains, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls. هَلْ مِنْ دَاعٍ فَأَسْتَجِيبُ لَهُ Human beings, anyone in need? Anyone has anything? Anyone has any dua? هَلْ مِنْ مُسْتَغْفِرٍ فَأَغْفُرُ لَهُ Anyone asking for forgiveness? And where are we? This man that's running every day looking for a job. This haram young man looking, searching for a wife. This man in haram that's sick, he needs to be cured. Running around doctors every day. Where are we? Asleep. Sleeping. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking. And then wake up in the morning and say, Allah, Allah gives, Allah is in control. Allah is Hayyul Qayyum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Where is the Iman? Where is the connection? Where is this relationship with Allah? Allah is calling and you are asleep. In the last third of the night. Hey, it's a shame. This time is gold. Precious as. You ask Allah, Allah is calling, Allah is saying, who, who wants? Anyone wants anything of this world? All of us are in need. Every single, of, every single one of us is in need. People want to make tawbah, people want to repent to Allah. This is the time. People find deen hard. Some people say, oh Allah, this, this sin, I can't stop this sin. I wish I can stop this sin. And where is he in the last third of the night? Asleep. Ya akhi, raise your hand. Ask Allah. Allah is there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to hear your voice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to hear you call him, asking him. And then, where are we? Asleep. 